Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Esoteric Atlanta. I am course. I'm. I am course. I am of course. course. <laughs> <laughs> With my friend and your friend Emmy Simpson from Holistic Genie. I will put her links down in the description box below. This is just a very quick um shadow work challenge update for you guys i know emmy's got to be off at a certain time because she's got her class today so how are you emmy before we get into it just a quick hello i'm doing pretty good um the last few months have been rough but it, it's all right it's all right i'm i'm in the tail end of the flu or cold or whatever the last two weeks i have been kind of down and out so i haven't been very active in the group or on my channel which is fine because we all need to take some rest when our body needs rest so it's what what were we saying on the phone the other day it's like dory from yes yeah, so i feel like dory it's like i get to these points where it's so overwhelming and i'm just like i just can't do this anymore <laughs> but i'm like just keep swimming keep swimming, <laughs> keep swimming. <laughs> <laughs> just keep swimming <laughs> so and and if anybody feels the need to comment about how that's all hollywood blah 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 we need to let we need to loosen up a little bit it's a funny thing i i tell myself that all the time like just keep swimming just keep swimming you know sometimes you just kind of have to keep going and so yeah it has been very rough and i'm glad you're feeling better i know a lot of people i mean what a doozy time to be doing a 60-day challenge but this is what we signed up for because we our souls are all overachievers. <laughs> mm -hmm. I just I wanted to say I wanted to say one thing when this when this sixty day challenge is done, take a break from shadow work. Yeah, you can't do shadow work all the time. Like I would say, take at least a good month. Like keep up your routine, like the meditation and the exercise. Uh, yeah, but as far as deep diving into the the real deep issues, the traumas all that stuff give yourself a breather you yeah. know oh for sure is, i'm sure this has definitely been bringing up a lot of of stuff for people and it's been very eye-opening and and very challenging um but you just need to take a break and let yourself integrate the changes that you've made let you let, allow yourself to embody the um shift in mindset you know that it, it's not a race this all takes time um you know bryce and i have been at this for a couple decades and we're still working on things we're still struggling we're still having things come up so it, it it's you're never done no <laughs> I, I would say you're done when you're dead, but even then you're not done. So yeah, right. <laughs> you got an extra life to life. Um, yeah, and I'm so glad you've said that, Emmy, because that's true. We do have what we call in yoga the integration phase, and so um, and yeah, you d that doesn't mean you stop exercising um, and meditating and journaling. It just means you you kind of stop picking at the scab for a little bit and let things integrate. Um, I know in the Mysore room, um, it, it's very common to have. A couple of weeks to a month where the teacher is literally on top of you every practice cranking you adjusting you working you really hard for like a month straight and then all of a sudden for like a couple of weeks the teacher doesn't touch you and that's the integration phase and it's integration time for your body so if we're looking at the very physical aspect of your body opening and allowing the body to kind of find its balance and the new new the new patterns that are have been created so when you're doing all this deep diving and this work on yourself you're challenging old patterns in order to create new patterns and there's a controlled demolition and then once that happens there needs to be a back off period you're still exercising of course don't quit exercising don't quit journaling or meditating but you're not digging deep you're just kind of allowing things to kind of settle and that gives you a time to kind of reflect to see where the changes have actually happened too. So at the end of the month where you're not digging deep in yourself, you can kind of see where things have integrated into your system too. So it is a very, maybe we should even do a show on that um, after we're done with the 60 days round table about that, because you do, you can't just kind of, kind of keep digging and digging without stepping back and seeing how far you've gone or what actually has shifted in you and changed in you. Cause sometimes the shifts are very subtle, you know, very subtle shifts and you don't notice. Um, I, I know for me specifically, I can look back at 40, I can look back at 30 and I'm a totally different person now from where I was at 30. And I know all that I can see, I don't know when all those changes actually happened, mm 
but I can see when they, how they evolved through the 10 years. And so um, that's really important. And, and to give yourself that moment, uh, I know I tell my students a lot in Ashtanga, because Ashtanga, when you go to Mysore classes, that is traditionally a class of criticism. You're going to be corrected. That's why you're going is to learn. And so I always try to make sure every once in a while, especially in the lobby with my students, just to remind them that you're doing a good job. You know, I just want to remind you, you have a strong practice because sometimes we become so, especially, you know, I think the more empathic you are, the more um, you, you, we tend to kind of beat ourselves up sometimes. And, and, um, and so it is sometimes important to sit back and go, you know what, I'm doing a good job. Mm-hmm. And this is hard stuff. And so and that that month where you can kind of take a break from really deep diving into how you're feeling, you can just celebrate, you know, it can be like a month of Sunday fun days where you're just doing some Richard Simmons and Jane Fonda sweating to the oldies and just enjoying yourself and enjoying your body and and enjoying the, you know, even though we don't do this shadow work for the vanity, the vanity is nice. Enjoy the changes in your body. Enjoy feeling you know, as the body starts to heal itself on a very physical level, the opening in the hips and the, the feeling better and the stomach being stronger. And I mean, right. I mean, like, it's kind of nice when the body starts to look younger, yeah. you know? Yeah, it is nice. Um, <laughs> and it's yeah, okay and I, to be excited about that. It's okay to be like, damn, I look good in a bathing suit, you know? Like, that's yes, <laughs> absolutely. Absolutely. And then, you know, in your break with the shadow work too, another thing that has really been helpful for me is um, focusing on and journaling on my character assets. You know, so, so often we focus on what needs to be changed and, and what we don't like about ourselves, but it's really, really important to balance that with focus on what you're doing well, what you like about yourself, what your assets are. Um, you know, cause our, our egos are hyper-focused on, okay, you know, what's wrong with me and what do I need to change? And, and, you know, that that's important. We need to do that, but balancing that with resting and taking a break and looking at what we're doing well and what assets we have is, is really important because otherwise we're just, the, the focus is unbalanced, you know? need to, to balance and it's, it's awesome you must be telepathic and me because that's part of their work tomorrow and uh, oh really awesome. yeah <laughs> and it's so important it's actually my favorite exercise that we did it in the 30 day too so i added it to 60 day because this is my favorite obviously today is thursday february 16th um happy mardi gras for those that are celebrating mardi gras um and so i'm not going to go too much into what you're doing today because i'm going to be this is me posting at the end of the day so let's go ahead and look at friday um February 17th. Uh, so warm up for both beginners and experienced. Uh, there's a hip stretch. We've also got the sun salutations, which the sun salutation challenge is coming up. Uh, Shanti and Mornay will be coming on to film about that. Um, and then beginners, you can do a 30 minute kickboxing or experienced 45 minute kickboxing, which people in the signal group and me are loving the kickboxing. It's Yay. fun. It can be fun. So I'm glad that you guys, and I'm really, and that's why, even though like Emmy and I have our own exercises that modalities that work for us, again, we've been doing this for a long time. So we figured out what works for us. But the reason why I um, put multiple different exercises in this shadow work is because I want you guys to have the, um, your own experiences within different modalities. So you know what works for you. So you know how the kick, like I said, if you're someone that struggles with anger issues, kickboxing might be something that's going to work for you to help you uh, dissipate that energy. Um, and so I'm really, really grateful that you guys are, are are taking the opportunity to experience all these different types of exercises to see, to really journal and understand how you're, you specifically, because nobody is the same. No human body is the same. No human experience is the same. It's uniquely yours. And so I'm so excited you guys are digging that. And um, you have an all meditation or sound ball meditation. You get to pick tomorrow which one works for you. Again, you're doing your uh, journaling for your dosha to figure out what foods work for you. And again, as I said, with a 30 day challenge, this is not necessarily, of course, the obvious is the gross body, right? Like, oh my God, my stomach hurts after I eat this particular food or this particular combination of food, or, oh my God, I have a headache, start to notice that. But also the subtle body reactions to food. Like, is there anything you eat that maybe 30, 45 minutes after you eat it, you feel depressed? 
or anxiety and do you notice a are you starting to notice a pattern that's also a signal to you that that food might not be energetically uh good for you um and so and that's one thing i love about the dosha system is that it is so different for each person um it and that's what i love about ayurveda is there is no one size fits all it is so uniquely different and so it forces each practitioner to really take authority over his or her own diet and exercise because only you really know how you are being affected only you really are the judge of what you're feeling and so that that gives you your in essence ayurveda gives you your power back and that's the big difference between ayurvedic medicine and western medicine i hate to say it is that ayurvedic medicine is really going to encourage you to take your power back and of course you need an ayurvedic doctor to really give you a full exam all that kind of stuff but they're going to teach you how to work with you and and so that's why i love it so much so this is what i love what we're doing today handwrite a note to someone you admire and the reason why i'm having you handwrite it and not type it is because the hands come from the heart right the the, the chakras and the hands are an offshoot of anahata and so it means more to handwrite you can either sign the note or keep it anonymous this needs to be handwritten no typing Either mail the letter to the person or place it in their mailbox or on a car windshield. Tell this person how much you admire them, how special they are to the world, and how grateful you are for them. After doing this exercise, go back to your journal and answer these questions. How did you feel writing the letter to the person you picked? How would you feel if you received a letter like this? Did you sign your name or did you leave it anonymous and why? There are no wrong answers here. Just curate, just, just for you to understand why you're doing certain things. List all of the qualities you admire about this person you pick to uh, uh, write a letter to. Read over these qualities five times. So read over them five times. Have you realized that these are actually qualities? It makes me emotional. That these are actually qualities of yourself. The light you see in someone else, that is your light. Mm -hmm. Just like I the... Yes, everything is our mirror, which is why when you when you are bothered by something in someone else, it's because there's something in you that needs healed. Yeah, that's why it's so important when we're triggered to not look at the person or situation that triggered us. Don't look at that it has nothing to do with them. It's just they're they're your mirror. Yeah, same thing with this when when you value and appreciate uh, a quality or qualities in another person. It's because you have those qualities and they reflect them back to you. I posted a short a while ago of one of Marnie Alton's um, speeches at the end of her class. And she was kind of talking about this and I'll share it in the description box, guys. And she said something at the end. She said, um, I think I posted, I'll have to check. But she she was talking about that the light you see in others is your light and the, the darkness you see in others is also your darkness too. And she said something in order to recognize, after all, in order to recognize something, you have to know it. And so, and we do focus a lot with shadow work that, oh, it's the bad stuff, but no, it's also the, the qualities you admire in someone. Those are actually your qualities that you're seeing reflected back at you. You know, it's, it's the beauty you see in someone, that's your beauty. And so not only are you making somebody else feel really good by writing them a letter of admiration, but it's also you realizing that that is a quality you share with that person. And I even wrote here with shadow work, we often focus on the dark side. For example, what annoys us in other people is often qualities of ourself that we need to work on. However, on the flip side, what we admire and love about others is also the same in us. The light you see in others is a light you have within you too. Is this a revelation to you? You and the person you wrote this letter to carry the exact same light. The love you felt for the person you wrote the letter to should be the same love you hold for yourself. And so I guess it makes me emotional. I think it's because we're so used to just criticizing ourselves so much that to realize that it's like Ra says from the law of one, even though you know we, we harp so much on how Earth is gangster planet because it's the hardest of all the polarity of the third density planets. And it's got the like we we like overachieve when it comes to the darkness here, you know, like other planets won't touch our darkness. But however, because it's so dark here, it has to also be balanced with that much light. And that's the beauty of Earth is that because there's so much darkness there equally is that much light. So 
I love it. All right. So we have journal questions. How did, how did a high power exercise? How did you did a high power? There we go. You did a high powered exercise to, again today. Once again, this was picked intentionally. If there is one thing that I, Bryce, want people to get from this challenge is the power of exercise. If you can understand how energy affects the body and how the, and how the mind affects the body, you can use certain alchemical movements to generate counter energy in the body to heal the body, mind, and spirit. Exercise isn't a punishment, but a superpower. Exercise creates the mystic, the healer, and it heals the human in you so you can be, a, be, a, be of service to humanity. Your body is powerful. Your body is limitless once you learn to control the bondage of the mind. With that being said, today you did another high-powered exercise to exhaust any leftover pain from the previous week's work. I wanted you to be clearer to do the extra uh, extra exercises written in blue above. Do you understand this? What have you learned from your body during this challenge? So I picked a high powered exercise on this day to get rid of any residual um, hangover, emotional hangover, so that you could be able to move into a place of admiration and seeing the light. So exhaust, and that that works, right? I know a lot of people who have really stressful jobs will then go and take a run after work just to be. I know a, a lot of attorneys are runners just to be able to get. They might not realize that's what they're doing. The chem, uh, alchemical response to taking in that because energy cannot be created or destroyed; it can only be transmuted. Right. And so by taking an energy, taking an emotion, taking in stress, your superpower is now having the wherewithal to go, you know what? I'm frustrated. I'm angry. I'm going to go kickbox and I'm going to go and I'm going to go exert that energy and let it transmute itself. And so that I feel, but I know everybody feels better after they've exercised, right? You feel a little clear minded. You've got, you've literally gotten a, been able to transmute that energy and so i'm so glad that you guys are really taking that in because that is your it is and i i personally my conspiracy tinfoil hat i think that the cabal has actually like manipulated the gym and like made us feel like it was punishment to fit into skinny jeans when that was never the point of exercise it was always to alchemically that listen the yogis of yore and the ancient yogis, they were living in the caves in the Himalayas. They weren't trying to look good in a bathing suit. They were just trying to find God. So if we bring, even though we can celebrate the benefits of exercise, we can still understand the purpose of it is to move energy and really have a moment with God within our body. All right. So how did the exercise of bluff and blue affect you, the letter writing? How did the exercise in the previous 30 day, if you did this exercise in the previous 30 day challenge, how did it, how did it, how did doing it a second time affect you? So for those who are doing this again, how did it affect you for a second time? Do you uh, recognize the light and beauty you see in others is the same light and beauty that is in you, in you as Marnie. Okay, here we go. As Marnie Alton says, in order to recognize something, you got to know it. The beauty you see in others is your beauty. If you want to be understood, seek to understand others. So actually, I forgot. I actually quoted her here. Is this exercise of, of writing letters of admiration something you would consider doing more often? List five things you admire about yourself, and I want those to be different than the ones you put in the letter. Um, where do you really shine in life? What is your biggest talent? All right. And remember, I know it's hard for us to say things that we love about ourselves, but this is in your journal. No one's going to be reading this but you. So you can be as honest with yourself. Please be as honest with yourself as as, uh, as possible. And then, of course, we, you have your optional oil bath tomorrow night and then saturday february 18th uh we have reiki for self-study saturday take detailed notes in your journal over the information you find on reiki i've got some videos up here with emmy now we did have a change in schedule there is a scheduling conflict um it was going to be an, a thing a hip hypnosis thing with amanda but we're gonna we're gonna have to change that so it's actually emmy is going to be sending me a link to her her reiki class at two o'clock on saturday eastern time and emmy do you want to speak on that a little bit about your reiki classes this isn't actually part of the shadow work challenge you were just going to be doing it anyway correct yeah 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 i i started um group reiki um every not every saturday not every other saturday but the saturday that is closest to the full moon or new moon of that month so it has worked out the first three months of this year that it's pretty much every other Saturday, but in April, it's going to change. Um, so I have uh, the the dates um, under the video on my YouTube channel where I talk about the group Reiki. 
Um, this is free. If you can donate, great. If not, just do something kind for someone else. But this is free. You don't have to pay for this. Um, it's going to be ongoing. Um, I plan to do this um, indefinitely. I, I wanted to start something now so that I have uh, something established for my future students because I'm going to be um, teaching Reiki soon. Um, so I wanted uh, a, a place for, for my students to come afterwards to um, receive Reiki and ask questions and learn and, and grow and everything. But I want this to be available to everyone, anyone who is interested in doing a guided meditation, um, receiving a little bit of Reiki. It's typically about an hour, maybe a little over an hour. Um, and um, I do a, a guided meditation with Reiki and there are um, themes related to the new moon or the full moon. So, yeah. Awesome. I've done one of your classes. It's amazing, guys. So I will be putting the link, the new link into the 60 day uh, ch uh, challenge template. Now, if you emailed me for you're going to have the old link there. So please make sure just check back. Um, Friday evening, tomorrow evening, I'll be putting the new link up on the community tab and I'll probably put it ag up again on Saturday and I'll probably, I know Emily, you're pretty good about putting it into the signal group um, that we have. And so, um, uh, yeah, awesome. And so that is your Saturday, Monday, which is, oh, Sunday. I was going to, I was so excited about your birthday, Emmy, that I almost can't oh. say. <laughs> um, so day 30 is Sunday, February 19th. You are half, you're now halfway through the challenge. You're a rock star. Take a moment to congratulate yourself new addition to the challenge since you're at the halfway mark you're gonna start making your bed up every morning some people do that already but just to i know with a lot of it's so simple like I, i've learned in my 17 years of doing this that sometimes the simplest of things make the biggest impact on your organization and your clarity of mind and making the bed up is one of those things i know a lot of people already do that if you're not a bed maker upper just try it for 30 days straight and see what happens in your life. See how your life, I, I was saying this to someone, you know, it's, it's, you can tell if you, if you know someone who's like really fit, who's like a long distance runner and they're just real fit. If you go to their house, I bet you anything, their house is super organized because it starts to transform everything in your life. The more you take care of yourself internally, the more the outside of your life starts to reflect that vibrationally match that. And that's one of the rules of our Yuveda is that your in internal life has to match your external life. I mean, Emmy, you've spoken about whenever people get attuned in Reiki, sometimes there's chaos after it happens in their house because everything's kind of trying to even out with the new vibration. Happens a lot in yoga too, where there can be some chaos because you are changing. And so everything else is kind of trying to, to, to vibe with you, you know? And so it makes sense. Um, and so just try making your bed up. It doesn't have to be fancy, like hotel style, military style made up, just keeping yourself organized. We're also going to be doing your last meal should be between five and 7 PM. No snacking after 7 PM. This allows your digestive system to rest. So your blood is a chance to cleanse and heal other organs, such as your skin. So I put a little vanity enticing there, but I also want everybody to, now I'm not I'm not a I'm not a food e person, but a lot of people are, and I think what happens a lot is at the end of the day, when we've been able to distract ourselves all day by work, kids, whatever, all of a sudden in the evening, when the kids are asleep, the day is done, and you're just chilling watching TV. People go to snack, and I think sometimes they don't even realize they're snacking because they're trying to avoid possible feelings that are coming up. And so by trying not to eat after 7 p.m., you're giving, you're doing one of, you're doing two things. You're giving your your, your organs a sense to recalibrate. Um, so your digestive tract can rest. So the blood can go elsewhere and really clean, cleanse your body. And you're also gonna be in a very uh, great place to kind of observe um, where you are emotionally. And if emotions, and if you find yourself going to the refrigerator, mindlessly being like why am i doing this now if you're like generally hungry then go and get something to eat but like most of the times we're not so um so with this sunday fun day usually it's sunday fun day but because it's a halfway point of a very long challenge we're going to take time time today to check in for your exercise you're only going to do sun salutations um you're going to warm up or you can either do 10 sun salutations a and 10 b 36 sun a 72 sun a 108 sun a this is going to be preparing you for potentially doing the sun salutation challenge which is going to kind of be a side challenge um with this challenge but just for you to just kind of check in and see 
The sun salutations are brilliant, aren't they, Emmy? They're like one of the best exercises. And it's a complete practice. You could just do sun salutations and that be a complete practice. It's uh, the surya is the prana. The sun is the upward rising energy. Namaskar or salutation is a greeting. So it's literally moving your life force, waking your life force up. And so that's why I've been having you guys do that every day before your exercise, just to really get into your subtle body and really start to feel that subtle body. You're also welcome, if you'd like to, to participate in my virtual class at Sacred Garden Yoga. You do have to sign up at Sacred Garden Yoga's website because it goes through her shala. Meditation, again, we've got the Reiki meditation with Emmy. Uh, food journaling, um, journal again. You're going to have some... Uh, we'll, you guys can look through, okay, we're going to be talking about subtle and gross body. So there you go. That's a good thing to start thinking about. What is gross body? What is subtle body? And then we'll talk about Monday, which is Emmy's birthday. <laughs> <laughs> Day 31. So you're making your bed up in honor of Emmy for her birthday. <laughs> oh, jeez. <laughs> <laughs> you're not snacking after seven um and you're going to be doing looks like uh yoga on, on emmy's birthday as well so full-on yoga with ashtanga nurse or the 20-minute beginner ashtanga also you're going to be doing um some meditations as well and so we are going i'll probably do another video later on to get into the next section of of the challenge because now you're kind of coming you're at the midway point so you're at the the precipice of the challenge and as i tell my students every sunday when we get to the halfway point of primary series and we're doing navasana everyone hates navasana i'm like listen this is the peak of the mountain the view is always the prettiest at the peak of the mountain mm, I love you're that. here you can look back at how far you've come and you can appreciate the view and you can see where you're going. Right. And so, so yay, it's an exciting thing. Um, mm -hmm. you, you're learning so much about yourself. And so, um, so yeah, it's not like, Oh God, I'm halfway through. I'm only halfway through. No, you're at the peak, honey. You're at the most beautiful part. Mm -hmm. And so, all right. Any, Emmy, is there anything you want to end off? Um, yeah, two things. Um, when you were talking about um, the snacking in the evening, um, something that could be really helpful for you if you are having trouble with this is um, do a grounding exercise. Food is very grounding. Mm -hmm. And um, a lot of times if, you know, you're someone like me who kind of hangs out in the upper chakras or, or used to, um, I would use food um, as a ground and I didn't even really realize that's what I was doing. Um, so if you're having a hard time stopping the snacking issue, or if you find that you are really hungry uh, before bed, try doing a grounding exercise and see what that does for you. Um, and the other thing is um, with the exercise and going forward, it might be beneficial to you to look at your natal chart and i know this sounds kind of funny because it, it seems like it wouldn't be related but look at all of the different planets and what energies they are in predominantly a, a natal chart will either have um fixed energy mutable energy or cardinal energy fixed people with a lot of fixed energy in their chart will do well doing the same exercise routine the same journaling routine, the same meditation routine going forward. Um, people with cardinal, a lot of cardinal energy would do well um, of reevaluating their goals every four to six weeks. Um, so um, we'll we'll do we'll do better reevaluating goals every four to six weeks and perhaps uh, making changes uh, within. And then people with a lot of mutable energy, will do well with changing it up. Um, so for a few weeks, do um, this particular exercise. And then when you get bored of it, um, pick something else and do that. Can you close the door, buddy? Thank you. <laughs> Looks like he's exercising. He's having yeah. fun. <laughs> <laughs> um, so there's that little little tidbit. Um, and, and it's really easy to look up um, the the different energies whether it's fixed mutable or cardinal and then you can kind of add them add them up um and no, see I mean, is that something somebody could book an appointment with you and is that, is that a service you could offer someone um i do plan on uh eventually doing 
the aspect pattern astrology, which is more of a form of psychology. But yeah, if you know what, maybe I'll if if people are interested enough, leave a comment and I'll do a video um, and put it up on my channel on how to to find the different energies in your chart. Oh, that'd be awesome. And, awesome. and once you do it, send it to me. I'll put it on my community tab as well. And because that, okay. yeah, it, it, it doesn't sound that, you know, for me, I'm so into the world of energy that that doesn't, that sounds. So if you're looking at your dosha, your chart, your. Oh, that's another thing. Your, the predominant energies in your chart coincide with the dosha system is what I've noticed. It's really fascinating. Yeah. And that's it's true because really I'm Vata Pitta. I'm Vata, and Vata is air, Pitta is fire. I'm Aquarius, which is air, and my rising sign is Leo, which is fire. Mm hmm. Very interesting. It's it. it I, I think that the all of these ancient sciences um, are just so brilliant. They're they're the more I test them, um, the more I see like everything I've tested with astrology has been accurate. And, you know, I just, I grew up in the church. I am a huge follower of Jesus. I, Yahshua, I still am in daily contact and, you know, but I remember him saying, test everything, test everything, test everything. So as he's bringing me these things and guiding me to these different areas, like to Reiki and astrology, um, I was really leery of it, but I was like, okay, he just said, test everything. Um, and so that's what I did. And it's so accurate. And so is the dosha system. It's just, it's so fascinating. So godly. It's just so yes. miraculous. And that all the missing books of the Bible all speak about this. You know, Yahshua and the missing books is teaching his students yoga. He studied in India. You know, Magdalene did as well. Her mother did as well. They have a lot of ties to the uh, ancient teachings of the Far East. And um, and it just, the more you, you understand it, the more you see how beautiful God works. And it's true. The Joyce family, who are my the family that holds the Ashtanga lineage, um, Guruji, who is no longer alive. I always look at his picture, which I know you guys can't see. It's on the wall. But I always like, look at his picture. <laughs> like, you guys know what I'm doing. Um he was an astrologer and so so many people who were students of his said that he could you could walk in and he'd be able to read you and know exactly where just by reading your energy you know where the planets were at your time of birth like he didn't even need to see because that's that's he was a shaman that's what his family did and all the students who were students of his said that he was he would there, they could not figure out the rhyme or reason as to why he, on some days he was hard on other people's, but gentle on others. And it's because he was reading their energy astrologically. And so when they say the planets aligned and you got a yoga surgery is what they called them. He, it literally meant that the planets were aligned for him to be able to come in hard for you that day and really pop things back into place for you. And so, and that is obviously a, a, a yoga master who is heavily working off of the Ayurvedic system as well as astrology and so you see the perfect patterning and that is the difference once again according to the navajos that's the difference between black magic and white magic black magic is when you're going against the laws of nature for your own selfish desires white magic is when you're working with nature to help people move through their natural phases of life so you're not fighting it you're not fighting the nature you're working with it you're working with the template God has has given each person, and so I think that's just so freaking beautiful that um, that that's the way that system worked. And it mean it does mean even though in the Ashanga system we're all doing the same six series, no no two people are the same in their practice because every person is being worked differently depending on that person. Nothing is better or worse; it's just different because every person's karma is different, every person's work is different, and that needs to be respected and acknowledged. And so, um, you know, and so it's such a beautiful thing. And so, I'd be so excited if you would do that, Emmy, because it's um, okay. it's it's exciting. It's really for us in the West. I, I don't. I'm not speaking for all Westerners, but I kind of am. I'm like, this is really exciting when you learn this stuff because all of a sudden it's like, oh my god, this makes so much sense. Like everything mm -hmm. just makes so much sense when you're like, okay, yes, ah, yes, okay, this makes sense. And so, um, also, I I meant, oh, I 
almost forgot before we sign out, I just had one of our awesome community members, David. I'm going to wait because I know he's coming. He's Once he his sister has her wedding, he's going to come on and talk about it. But he sent me from Canada some of his soap. So I got to like show it soap magic here. And I'm so excited. I'm all about us um, over here on, on our side of this internet of this war really supporting each other and really promoting each other. And so David, if you're watching, leave me a comment down there, buddy. I know you get think you got to get everything set up, but once you're ready, I would love to promote your business as well because we really, and he sent me some awesome stuff with some rocks. I got to open it up and look at it, but, but um, you know, we're all about helping each other out and working together to support each other in our, in our walk, our walk home, our long hike <laughs> <laughs> and trek. Y'all, we got real lost on the way home. Like we, we, had to, <laughs> we had to take the long way home. We got lost. <laughs> we must have been like Hansel and Gretel. We let breadcrumbs out and the birds ate it. Now we lost. So <laughs> we'll make it though. We'll make it together. We might have to hit hit a few wrong wrong turns along the way, but that's okay. The wrong turns can be really beautiful. So <laughs> we're doing some sightseeing along the way home. So so. Uh, so I, I can't wait, David, for you to come in and talk about that as well. Also, a little update too. Tomorrow morning, Friday morning, I had a video request from a viewer. I talked to Emmy about doing it. I've talked to Catherine about doing it. Morning, Shante. Uh, somebody emailed me. I know, Emmy, you got to go in a minute. But somebody emailed me about uh, vlogging what a day, what, what my day looks like as far as like incorporating, you know, I think. And I realized, and I wasn't going to do it but because I'm not a vlogger, but I realized that for people who are new to shadow work and new to this, I think sometimes people have these really high expectations of what it's supposed to look like. And it's rarely what it looks like. I promise you guys, we're not skipping off to an ashram every morning. Like, and so I, I did it. I vlogged myself this Monday. It'll air tomorrow showing you what my day looks like with my exercise and journaling and everything I squeeze in when I squeeze it and where I squeeze it. And I even talk about my food intake because that's an issue for me. And so I've, I've talked to Emmy Catherine, possibly get them to do it too. So we're all very different people with very different lives. And so you can see the comparing and con contrasting about how we work this into our daily life. So you can understand it doesn't have to be perfect. It rarely is. Yeah. Yeah. Rarely. So, all right, you guys. Well, thanks for, um, thanks for sitting through this. I'm, you guys are rock stars on this shadow work and I know Emmy's got a class. She's got to jump on now. So I'm going to go ahead and end this. Thank you, Emmy. I'm so excited about Saturday. And, um, if you guys are having any questions or any thoughts, concerns about the shadow work you want us to talk about in an upcoming video, ask away down in the comment section below. You guys are all superstars and rock stars and you're doing a really good job. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> Bye everybody. Bye.